WQEX thanks those who have made broadcast of this program possible, our members, and Blue Cross of Western Pennsylvania and Pennsylvania Blue Shield and Integra Bank, serving the communities of Western Pennsylvania for more than 130 years, offering classic choice, a variety of financial services for active savers and investors. Integra Bank, because you want more from your life and more from your bank. The bank for times like these. And by St. Margaret Memorial Hospital, enriching the lives of seniors and their families. If you're older, you're in capable hands at St. Margaret. For more information, call 784-4144. Whether you're thinking about leaving town for a vacation or just spending a leisurely day shopping, you certainly don't want to come home and find your cherry possessions gone, or an empty space where your TV used to be. I'm Eleanor Shano, and on tonight's edition of AgeWise, we're going to talk about smart ways to protect your home from being burglarized, and we're going to have a chance to look at some nifty gadgets that can provide added security to your home. about it, crime is one of the major concerns among Americans today, especially older Americans. And tonight, in the next half hour, we hope to give you some information that will keep you from becoming a victim. I want you to meet my guest. She is a City of Pittsburgh police officer, crime prevention officer, Sandy Burbish. Mm -hmm. Sandy Burbish. Officer, uh, we live in a constant, I think, state of fear, whether you live in the city, whether you live in the suburbs, whether you live in an apartment, whether you live in a home. What is the, what, what's the biggest thing that burglars are after, aside from the obvious things of jewelry, um, television sets? One of the biggest things that they're after is things they can carry, get in, take, get out quickly. Okay. They want to be into your house, they want to be out of your house in three to five minutes. Three and five. I, I saw some, some uh, there was a list of best kept secrets that burglars have. And uh, the, the one said that, um, that actually if a burglar can't get in and out of your house in 90 seconds, he's going to give up and go to the next house. That's right. He wants to get in and out fast. That's right. He does not want to be apprehended, and most of them aren't, right? Right. right. Most of them are professionals. Most of them are professionals, and once you arrest one of them, you clear. We just had a case in Zone 6 where they arrested one person, cleared 48 cases. Four day burglars. All right. Is it safer to live in an apartment? I'm sure a lot of older people think so. And what should they do as a precaution to make sure that their home is safe? Well, if you have any type of a uh, problem, such as walking problems, sight problems, mm -hmm. you are better off to live in an apartment. Make sure that your apartment has some type of a security. Mm -hmm. uh, front doors. And even there again, the security in the apartment is only as good as the people that live there. One person breaches that security and just buzzes and lets people in, that compromises the whole thing. Okay, and an open window is, uh, is as much of an invitation to a burglar as an open front door, isn't it? That's correct, even on the second floors. And watch if you live by fire escapes. They'll go right up and right in. Um, when do most burglaries occur, daytime or nighttime? That depends, believe it or not, on the neighborhoods. If you live in a neighborhood where most of the people are at work during the daylight hours, mm -hmm. naturally the burglars are going to hit in the daylight hours. And some place that has like uh, the people, the younger people that everybody's working, kids are in school, mom's working, when are they going to hit? Okay. Daylight hours. Okay, so then a professional burglar is going to case the neighborhood. Uh, he's really going to have a target. Uh, it's not an impulse move. Well. Most burglaries are opportunistic. If they can get in, it's the right time, it's the right place. Mm -hmm. 
but the burglar does know the neighborhood he is going into. Mm -hmm. He just doesn't drive down a street and stop and say, gee, that looks like a nice place to get to. They're going to know where they're going. They're going to know about who lives there, what they're after. What is it about a house that would make it particularly attractive to a burglar? An attractive house is a house that cannot be well seen either by the neighbors. Okay, lots of shrubbery. Lots of shrubbery, lots of shrubberies covering those windows, uh, above window sills, uh, things by the front door that you could hide behind, mm -hmm. hidden garages, hidden entrances, back entrances. A lot of people, for some strange reason, they put a lot of money in their front doors. Their rear doors you can walk right in. Basement doors you can walk right in. You know, one swift kick and you're in there. So it's really important to check your whole house. What about the season of the year? We're now moving into nice weather. Will we have more burglaries in the, in the spring than in the wintertime? Well, it depends. Uh, burglars do not like real bad weather, real hot weather where people are out. Uh, a lot of snow because you leave footprints in the snow, mm -hmm. uh, that kind of a thing. Uh, the seasons, they like uh, Christmas. A lot of burglaries around Christmas. People well, they go need, shopping. They need a little extra money, too. Right, and people go shopping. They bring their stuff home. They put it in the house. A lot of cameras, uh, a lot of TV equipment, that kind of type of thing, VCRs. They're bought around Christmas time. They know they're bought around Christmas time. And some people are even nice enough to put out the used containers that's saying, I just bought a stereo system. Aha, uh -huh, so that's yes, okay. Yes. That's another thing that yes. we have to watch. Don't put your uh, your your packaging out on the curb right don't advertise what you have in your house okay. break them up put them down flat a lot of people say oh i just got this brand new thing well they put all their rubbish in there and stick it out in the sidewalk you know what they just got what about a dog excellent big dog, dog little dog well it really doesn't matter but sometimes the small dogs are actually better than the big dogs because mm -hmm. the small dogs have a tendency to bark their heads off and shut up mm -hmm. But pay attention to your dog, and don't lock your dog out in the backyard. A dog tied in the backyard says to a burglar, ha, dog's tied in the backyard. Let's go through the front door. Okay, officer, what about, um, I don't have a dog, but I go to the hardware store and I buy one of those signs that say, beware of vicious dog. You can do that. You can also get a nice big bowl put egg whites all around it, a little bit of spaghetti dirty up the inside of the bowl, mm -hmm. put it out in the back, get a chain about yo big, stick it out by your back door. People mm -hmm. think you have a large dog. Okay, anything else? Now, aside from the very expensive, you know, security systems, and I, I, I think while I we're on that subject, just read that only 2% of the alarms that go off in the city of Pittsburgh indicate a crime in progress. You waste a lot of time answering those false alarms. Yes, we you? do. Yes, we do. And the problem with it is, is it's, it even interferes with the officer's safety. Because, especially a thunderstorm, you get a thunderstorm in the city of Pittsburgh, in certain areas, you've got 100 burglar alarms, and we have to check out every one of them. Okay, Officer Sandy Burbish, we have a live call in talk show going tonight, and we have a caller on the line. Caller line five, you're on the air. I live in the Honest Wagner building in Carnegie for seniors and the police are here almost all the time and the uh, ambulances and um, take them to hospitals quite often and then to nursing homes but there's a lot of wheelchair people here and nobody ever checks on the rooms and I heard they found the lady dead in the room for two days just a few days ago okay now what and is your question ma'am the cleaning lady um what well, is, your is question? there a way that we could get some changes uh, where they could be checked on more often a lot of elderly people living alone in the city uh, where you not have a police problem no but it is where you have a lot of elderly people in apartments, what we advise you doing is getting together and sort of have a block watch, but it's actually a building watch. Have one person on each floor contact each other and say, mm -hmm. hey, hi, are you okay today? Mm -hmm. A lot of times in the city of Pittsburgh, we have somebody on, in most of our housing uh, areas where we have elderly, we have somebody on 24 hours to check on people. In other words, if you don't see somebody for a while, you call them and you say, you know, are you all right? 
Otherwise, I advise people to take the initiative and start something in their own business. Okay, that's Still a great don't. idea. Living in, a, in an apartment building, especially if there are a lot of elderly people, just assign one person to each floor, and it's their responsibility to check in with everybody every right. day and make sure right. that everybody's okay. Just hi, how are you? We're talking about security, how to keep you from becoming just another statistic, to keep you from becoming a victim. We're going to be back for your questions, your comments, our number 683 -1600. Tonight at 11.30, pay a visit to Bayview Retirement Village, where the residents are very friendly. Do you mind if I sit down? Sit, stand, do whatever you like. You can burn to the ground for all I can. <laughs> where dining is always an experience. This meat isn't very good. Never is. What is it? Squiddle. And it's a place where you're only as old as you feel. Well, I want to do something young. Good idea. Go and play in the traffic. Join in the fun. Waiting for God. Tonight at 11.30 on WQEX 16. A touch of cooking, a pinch of dining, a dash of adventure. All the ingredients for incredible edibles as Chef Pierre Frenet leads a gastronomic tour of France. From acclaimed restaurants to favorite bistros, Pierre Frenet's Cooking in France. Thursday afternoon at 1. about uh, how to keep your home, uh, your valuables secure and out of the hands of thieves and burglars. Our guest tonight is a crime prevention officer. Her name is Sandy Verbish. And officer, um, in the city of Pittsburgh, how long does it take for the police to respond when they get a call? Well, it depends on the type of call. If it's a true emergency, a bad uh, call, somebody breaking into your house right now, depending mm -hmm. on how it goes in, uh, we can be on scene for a bad call anywhere from a minute minute and a half. Okay, how do, you know, how do you know if it's a bad call? I mean, it, what is the first thing that a person should say when they pick up their telephone to call 911? The first thing that somebody should say when they pick up the, the phone to call is to respond to the question that's asked them. In other words, you have somebody sitting there at a computer board. Mm -hmm. She knows what to ask you, he knows what to ask you. The very important, they'll say 911 emergency. Okay. What is your problem? Tell them, I have something, and then they'll ask you where you are. Should you're at. you say, if it is an emergency, this is an emergency? I think so. It'd be, right. you know, the letter then person. the next thing, should you give your address before you do anything if else you in wish case to. there's some interference? Yeah. In the city, though, we're very lucky. We can pop you up immediately. You come up on screen. Okay. Um, again, not, we're not going to be talking about those sophisticated security systems. What are some other things that people can do if they are going to be, especially now at this time of year, people are getting ready to go on vacation? How can you make people think that there's somebody in the house when you're away? One of the best things you can do is have a good neighbor. It's okay. very, very important to have a neighbor that you can help and they can help you. Mm -hmm. Do not stop your deliveries. Do not stop your milk. Do not stop your mail. Do not stop your paper. Somebody can be watching this type of thing. The best thing to do is have your neighbor pick it up. Okay. It's also very important to have your timers in your house time correctly. In other words, if you have a two-floor house, split entry house, anything like that, mm -hmm. have timers on one floor to go on from such and such a time, mm -hmm. go on another floor at such and such a time. So it doesn't go on and off completely. Always have a light on in your home, whether you're home, whether you're not home. Make sure there's some type of a light on your house so that you can see. Watch your drapes. Watch, don't pull your drapes completely closed like... If you're going to be away on vacation, do not do close not. your drapes. Push them and have some type of a shear so that you can see in, but you can't. It's mazed. Mm -hmm. Watch what you do with most of the things on the outside, such as if it's bad weather, have somebody come over and either shovel or trample. Mm -hmm. Make it look like somebody's walked in and out of the back door, walked in and out of the front door. Share your trash, maybe. Share yeah. your yeah. trash. Neighbor to yes. Garbage is the number one thing they look forward to. You know, on a pickup day, is if you're, I don't care what else you do, if you don't have any garbage there, you're not home. I don't care ah. what else you do, if you don't have garbage. So tell your neighbor to put the stinkiest garbage that they have <laughs> right out in front of your house. That should help um, you quite a bit. Call our line eight. You're on the air with Officer Furbish. Go Thanks, ahead. Eleanor. A uh, question for you. In September 1992, I had a burglary at a piece of property I own. And the police showed up and took a report. And I never heard any follow-up. 
Within 12 months of the burglary, a person residing close to the property was arrested for burglary. So my question is, how do I know if the police ever recovered any of my stuff and my stuff was not labeled before the burglary? You won't. What we tell people to do is in the city of Pittsburgh and some outlying areas now, we now have what they call Operation ID. And what you do is you get an engraver for six to eight dollars at any hardware store. You engrave your operator's driver's number onto your stuff. You, it's a digit. If you put your social security number on there, we need a court order to get your social security mm -hmm. number and they're not going to forget it. What you do is you take your operator's driver's number and you engrave it on all your things. Now, you put the, say if you are uh, PA, use PA. If it's a higher OH, California, whatever. If that's fine anywhere in the United States, all they have to do is hit the NCIC system and in mm -hmm. 10 seconds you know who that person is. If you do not have a driver's license, you can either use a friend's or the state of Pennsylvania has a non-driver's driver's license, mm -hmm. which a lot of senior citizens get, by the way, for check cashing. Okay, good, good, good information. Caller line five, you're on the air. Hello, I have um, one question. Um, I heard that if you have your own burglar system and you have the signs all out around your house, I heard that's supposed to attract burglars. If you have your own burglar system and if you have those signs around the house that it's supposed to attract burglars, I think maybe another way of that I'll, I'll, I'll take that question is do uh, burglar systems, do the security systems, do you think that they deter criminals? Yes and no. Security systems uh, and all burglar alarm systems are only icing on a cake. Mm -hmm. You've got to tighten up your house in the first place. If you've got a good tight house, then putting the security system on is an added little thing there. If you've got a bad house, if you've got a house that they can just push in, push in a door, push in anything, putting the system on isn't going to help much. Because the professional knows how to, to right. get through That's right. And that besides system. that, you have to remember that you know, we had a rash of burglars up in uh, Squirrel Hill thefts where they just took the signs off of people's front yards and went and put them on their own front yards. So bur burglars don't necessarily believe that you have one just because you have a okay. sign. One quick question before we go to the break. Um, light sensors, motion sensors, wouldn't that be a great thing to use, especially if you're going to be going on vacation because when you approach the house, the light goes on, a burglar is not going to know whether there's someone in that house or not. And they're not too expensive, are they? No. Motion sensor lights are excellent. They also have the heat sensors out now. You can get them from anywhere to 8 to $10. If you want the real sophisticated stuff, you can go up to 40 or 50 They're excellent. They're easy to install. And they put you on guard if somebody's going around your house. Explain for our viewers who don't know how they work. Um, what happens is you set the sensor at the end of your property. For heaven's sakes, don't set the sensor so that it's all the way out in the middle of the street. And every time somebody goes by, it, you know, it, it, you set it, and as soon as somebody walks into that sensor, whack, that light goes off. Okay. Eight to ten dollars, maybe the best money you'll ever invest. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back. And when we come back, we're going to show you some nifty new locks that you, I'm sure, are going to be very interested in seeing. 683-1600. Stay with us. Sit back and tour Europe's greatest art museums with your guide, Sister Wendy Beckett, a 63-year-old nun who spent the last 12 years in solitude devoted to the study of art. I must confess that I have a problem with this picture. Not because of the picture. I think it's one of those magical pictures ever painted. The problem is me. I really can't find the words to tell you how magical it is. Don't miss Sister Wendy's Grand Tour tonight at 10.50 here on WQEX. Time for a zinger. Let me practice the swing. Get that stuff out of here. practice and playing golf. Oh, is that what it is? I thought it was football, the way your backfield was in motion. Ouch. For more classic zingers, watch The Honeymooners tonight at 11.
Don't believe the hype about youth violence. What you see on the news are crime scenes. It makes it seem like you can't stop the violence. So what can we do? Are police and prisons the only answer? Don't believe there's nothing you can do to stop it. The fact is, people like you across the country are already doing something. All year long, you'll meet them here on this channel. We're calling our effort Act Against Violence, and you'll meet people like Joe Marshall and Margaret Norris, who started a weekly radio show that helps young people solve problems. Tammy Bird's inner city students created a thriving business that provides jobs and college scholarships to its student owners. And Fidel Valenzuela's Teens on Target presents workshops to help resolve problems. Learn how you can act against violence. It's up to you. Are you up to it? Join QED's campaign to act against violence. Call 255-1155 during business hours. And Devlin, Lynn Cullen. Now you can watch the talk. Cullen Devlin, only on WQEX Pittsburgh. We did some magic. Uh, we had Sandy with us a couple of minutes ago. Now we have Sandra with us. Sandra Hunter is the president of Ace Lock Company. And she brought along, well, this is show and tell time on AgeWise, some, some wonderful locks. And uh, Sandra, I'm going to kind of th turn things over to you. How can we make our home more secure? OK. What we recommend is that every exterior door be equipped with a deadbolt lock. Okay. And a deadbolt lock can either be locked from both sides or one side. If mm -hmm. you choose to take a deadbolt lock that has a key from both sides, then you just need to be careful that you have a key in case you have to get out in an emergency. A lot of homes just have a what's called a key and knob type lock. And as you can see, the latching mechanism in this lock is in no way as secure as a one inch throw bolt on the deadbolt. That's pretty sophisticated. Uh, you certainly couldn't install, install that yourself. You would have to have a professional. Actually, um, if you have uh, some degree of mechanical aptitude, we have a lot of people that come in and purchase locks and install them th themselves. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Now, what if, what, if they, um, what if they need some help? Is there anywhere that someone can go if they buy a lock from you to, to have someone install it? Yes, we have technical people that um, will assist anyone with the installation. Okay. We're going to go to the phones. Uh, line 5, you're on the air. Line 5, are you out there? Okay, Line 5 uh, probably went to get a glass of water to lock their door, maybe. Um, patio doors. Now, I used to have a patio door, one of those glass sliding doors, and I had the old baseball bat, and I felt pretty, pretty secure. Is that okay? That can work fine. There's um, also a lot of other things How about available. this? Um, this is called a Charlie bar and okay. basically any of these locks will prevent someone from being able mm -hmm. to uh, push the um, sliding glass door open. Sliding glass doors are very vulnerable and um, so it's it's difficult situation to lock up. Okay, um, what are some other things that you brought along? Well, one of the things that I wanted to point out was some of these locks which are this is called a night latch. It's a very um, inadequate type of lock. So if you move into a home or you're in an apartment and it has this type of lock, you should consider investing in a lock that's going to be give you more security. I always felt very secure with a chain lock. Good idea? We don't recommend chain locks um, because we find that what people will do is use the chain lock to screen visitors. and you can see that these chain locks do not provide a lot of security. A burglar could just break the chain and then be able to um, enter the premises. Well, how are you going to screen visitors? Uh, what about a peephole? Yeah, the peephole is a much better idea. That way the door can remain is secure. Is this a peephole? Pee yes. Okay. They come and in different sizes. And you can install those mm -hmm. uh, pretty easily? Yes. Okay. Um, we should have talked to, um, to Officer Furbish about this, but since I see a lot of keys around, uh, what do you tell your people about where to put their keys? I think that um, uh, we all have uh, a favorite little place where we want to put that extra key, and uh, the officer probably, if she were still here, would say, just don't think that you're fooling anybody. 
it's not a good idea. Um, a much better idea is to have a trusted neighbor or someone in your family where they can have a spare key. Mm -hmm. Okay, what do we have over here, Sandra? Uh, these are some mm. window locks. Um, we recommend that all windows uh, are secured with some type of a lock. There's um, several different kinds depending on the material that the window is made of. Uh, isn't there a problem with locking your windows uh, in, in case of a fire? Do you want to have all your windows locked in your house? Well, again, um, as long as you know where the keys are inside, that will protect you and be able to get out in an emergency. All right. And as um, Officer Furbish pointed out earlier in the show, that uh, an open window on a second floor is just as inviting to a burglar as an open front door. So I, I suppose we, we have to make sure to keep our windows locked. But this is a little, this is a little um, more involved than just locking the window. What, what do we have over there? We have, uh, it looks like a screw that you would screw into your window. Yes, um, these are a very inexpensive way of securing windows. Um, they come in a package with um, six screws and they basically just pin the window shut. Um, of course, the disadvantage is that once the window is shut, then you have to use this little key to open it. Okay, we've talked about a lot of things in the past uh, half hour. Uh, we purposely avoided talking about those sophisticated uh, security systems because there certainly have lo lots of choices on the market, but we thought you would be more interested in knowing maybe some things that you could do for yourself. And uh, as Sandra pointed out, these locks are available. If you don't have the expertise to install them yourselves and you, you go to someone like Sandra, they, they can help people find a technician who will help you make your home safer. Also, there's a wonderful program, and this is only available for people in the city of Pittsburgh. It's for city residents, and if you qualify, and actually the eligibility qualifications, uh, you could earn as much as $20,000 a year, free security items, uh, deadbolt locks and smoke detectors and door peepholes and house numbers and, and lifelines and a lot of things. So you see the number on your screen right now, and uh, if you qualify, uh, you might want to call these numbers and, and uh, see if you qualify. It's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to, to tighten up the security in your home and uh, make sure that you are not going to become the next crime victim in this city. Uh, I want to thank all of you for joining me tonight. I want to thank my guests, uh, Officer Sandy Furbish and uh, Sandra from Ace Lock uh, Company. And join me again next week. We're going to be talking about allergies. Please. Be out there next Wednesday night at 8 o'clock. I'm Eleanor Shano. The good years start here, remember.